What do you want to know? Why? Why? Why all of this? Why put yourself in this position? Why are you so adamant on constantly getting hurt and constantly making yourself be the villain? The villain, huh? I have done nothing but try to stop all of this. But at what cost? And why are you not letting us in on it? Why are we not fighting together? Because I don't trust <clears> her. <throat> and more importantly, some things are not meant to be known. This is bigger than you and your silly family, Alia. Your defiant crew. We can help. We can help each other. You know this. You can't help me. Give us Show a chance. Sholi couldn't help me. The only people that ever tried to help me. Okay, enough foreplay. Which one of the clones are you? She goes, does it matter? Yeah, I'd like to know which which time or which version of you we've interacted with. So how do we know you? <laughs> I see you have met the other sisters. Several of them. How many are there, actually? Do you, Eleven. Do you know? Oh, that's a lot. She says, okay, I'll play, sister. You think you're trying to help. You're getting in the way. The First Horizon only wants to bring peace to this place. To get rid of your consortium and your homogeny and reset it in an equal way. What, what did you just say? You think you understand, but you know so little. Nina, they are here to kill us. I've they seen the visions. They are only I... killing those who stand in their way. And how do we know what is in their way? Because you are you stopping know me. their grand plan. And the person that I sought had the weapon we need to stop war from ever happening. It's all over, Alia. Are you really that naive? Then enlighten me. Well laid plans, Alia, of the First Horizon. Over a decade ago, they broke through. A single ship, and then another, and another. And they slowly started to hide themselves amongst the general populace. One of their very first projects was a cloning operation. They created a woman, an assassin, a weapon. Her name was Kasha. I've, I've told you, I have seen the visions. I have connected with one of those ships. I know what is on their mind. They don't seek any sort of compromise. They don't seek any sort of salvation. They only seek destruction, and perhaps in your, in their mind, that is, that is their version of salvation. But none of us will survive. None of us will be here. They will come and hail fire. What we have been through, what all of us have been through, is nothing in comparison to what they will bring. You're trying so hard, Alia, to try to convince me that I'm your sister. But when they took her DNA and put it in a petri dish, and I grew from it, I am not your sister. Malik takes a step forward, looses his Vulcan pistol from its holster, and presses it to her forehead. Fuck it, I'm already the voice of a revolution. Uh, Malik, please. Please what? I don't know, but I can do some good input. I'll tell you what, Alia. The nicest thing I can do for you right now is give you a second to leave the room. Samina, please. There is still time. Alia. What is it you want me to do, Alia? Tell you I'm sorry. Stop this plan. What is it? Give us a chance to convince you that they are not here for us. They never were here for us. And maybe that's true, but your emissaries, the fight of the second and the first horizon, will only bring more darkness. And the fact of the matter is, I'm going to die anyways. Malik pulls the trigger. He says, I have a message for Jalissa. The second horizon, they've been moving the emissaries across the third horizon, separating them, each one to a different monument. They are some kind of key, an access point to either shutting it down or turning it on. Our hope is that if we can get one emissary to each, but we have lost emissaries. Does it need to be emissaries? I don't know. All I know is that they are moving them and they believe that it has to be the emissaries, that their entire purpose of coming here was to shut <coughs> these things down. You said they were keys? Yes, there's an ancient text that talked about being sent by the icons, of the icons, incarnate themselves. They were drawn here, or would be drawn here, for a cataclysmic event, one in which they would sacrifice themselves. This is why they came, not to bring the darkness or war. The Second Horizon, they saw this prophecy, and they came here to stop it, and only in its wake found the First Horizon. 
I've been working undercover for quite a while in the archives, trying to suss out what information I can and pass along information from the Order of the Pariah. And he kind of leans over and goes, what, what do you mean you have a key? Um, we have uh, the machine. The lost icon? Yes. That is not a key. That is an icon. But the machine gave us a key. The machine has not been seen here since before the portal wars. I saw the machine here last night. She watches, observes, she waits. And so what? Her emissary has been sent to take its place. Her emissary was lost? Her emissary was never sent. Her emissary just said he saw her last night. You do not look like an emissary to me. I've seen them with my own eyes. I don't know that I understand this, but I will <clears> answer <throat> your questions where I can. The information that was sent is that in T-minus 48 hours, the First Horizon will make their attack, attempt to infiltrate Monolith on Kua. They believe that even without the emissary, they can still make it work. Here we go. Arise, minions, and welcome to Unmade Gaming. We are here for the 18th episode this season, the 50th episode overall. Uh, you saw the recap, so if you like what we do here and you want to support the channel, the best way to do that is over on our Patreon. Link for that down below. Uh, get exclusive access to all of our behind-the-scenes after shows. Join some exclusive games and get all kinds of news and details. While you're down there, click on that Discord link. Join us in the Discord. Be a part of the community. Be a part of the conversation. And as always, in the bottom right-hand corner, you will see the corruption bar. That bar serves two purposes. One is when that bar fills, Doc gets to do the hell she wants to us. And two, every single dollar that goes into that goes back to these wonderful, amazing faces that you see here before you. That being said, Dot, proceed to blow up Coriolis. <laughs> okay. Well, that's not really the end gold, Mike, but you never know. I'm sitting on 11 darkness points in which yeah, I have right. promised to spend before the end of the campaign. Okay, Dot, we believe you that it's your end goal. Okay, so uh, I will not do a recap because that was a beautifully, beautifully edited uh, recap, I thought, Mike. Thank you very much. Well done, sir. It's learning. Um, yeah, uh, like, wow, uh, well done. So. Four seasons in. <clears throat> let us not forget that at the very tail end, after learning all this information, being provided some gear, uh, which Sewell dropped off, um, and Jalissa telling the crew that uh, they would begin moving the, these refugees off of Coriolis. Uh, that was her main goal. There was a, an attack or at least an explosion that happened on the far end of the uh, space station, Coriolis. Now, it rattles everything. Stuff falls off of shelves, though there's no direct like explosion. Walls don't implode. It seems to be rather far off from what you can tell. But there was... Um, a pretty massive explosion um, for what you can tell on the other side. And as everything kind of settles for a second um, and, uh, you know, a tin cup finishes like rattling on the floor, um, you hear Jalissa's voice ring up as she calls for like troops uh, to grab weapons and ca gather everything they can. They need to move people quickly. Um, and our episode picks up in a moment of a little bit of chaos brought on by a darkness. Actually, it was a corruption bar last week that did that. Corruption. Thanks, chat. Thanks, um, chat. Uh, at this, uh, Tal will say, okay, well, we can't wait, so let's get going. And we'll start heading towards uh, grabbing what gear packs I have and uh, then towards my ship. Cool. Um you can see that there's, uh, you know, Sewell along with all of these, these kids are being kind of uh, pulled out. They're being moved into this kind of back section that uh, looks to be opening up into some kind of private docking bay or at least tunnel system that gets them there. Um, Jalissa waves at you from afar um, and she says, you can see her, she doesn't yell it, but you can see her mouth move and she says, I love you. To you, Tao how uh replies out loud uh i love you too she says run you idiot and then <laughs> i uh i i actually turn to um uh to alia 
And I say, you know, I know that you would rather help people than uh, do what we're about to do, uh, which is hopefully help people, but in a completely different way. Um, you don't have to come with us. I mean, you are obviously always welcome here, but I know that this is task isn't really you. I, I really appreciate that, Captain. I just, whether I'm here or not, I'm not sure I would be much help, really. I feel like they already have everything under control, or at least the best that they could. And honest to God, honest to the icons at this point, I'd rather be with family. And I want to be with you, all of you. If I can well, be helpful, that would be fantastic. But all I'll be constantly doing helpful, whether you realize it or not. And I extend that to everyone else at looking around at meeting each of my crew members' eyes. It, if you don't want to come do this, then don't. I'm with you, Captain. Till the end. Shall we? And I think uh, I'll, at that point, kind of heads towards the ship. Yeah, I'll, I'll turn and head towards the ship, uh, kind of afraid to look behind me and see if everybody else joins us. Do Does everybody else join you? Yeah, we never stop moving. Yeah, yeah. Great. Keep going. <laughs> uh, mm. You all begin to run. Um, and uh, amongst all of the chaos, uh, you know, women, uh, children crying, women kind of um, uh, screaming orders and you hear a voice rise up that was like, Are, were you going to leave me? No, come on, Lamara. <laughs> She she's at like the far end of the space and you can see she's carrying the helmet and she's very clearly a smidge weak, but she's not like stumbling over herself. And she's like leaning on a doorway that's like, what the? I'll go over and, and like <laughs> pull her arm over me and, and help her. She goes, you weren't leaving me, right? You, you were going to no. come back for me. Yeah, I thought they totally. had like three days left on it. <laughs> they may have pulled her out early. You don't know. In fact, you know, I have darkness points to spend. I just I have... kind of shrug and look at Malik like it had three days on it. You know what? I'm going to spend a darkness point. They did, in fact, have to rip her out of the helmet early. Oh, God. That's not great. OK, well, then I'm, I'm going to help Lamara to the, to the ship. Yeah, Malik, <laughs> Malik grabs the other arm. Um. Maybe she hands the helmet off to Tamir or Alia, whoever takes it, and you all begin kind of running. Now, you're going to go back through the same way you came in. This is not the way that they're routing the mass of, of people. Um, and as you kind of hit uh, the cellar, that emptiness sets in again. Uh, as you exit through the stacks, these barricades in place, um, dry blood stain all over steel and metal. And... Um, are you moving with any level of how how are you getting there? How, how would you like to get there with a lot of stealth or would you prefer to just uh, beeline for your ship? As stealthy as possible, but also ready to be ambushed. In fact, I think when we, when we get to this point, I'm going to kind of uh, duck out of Lamar, Lamar's arm uh, so that I can be free for any okay. combat that arises um yeah and she's not really like i said she's not that weak but it is nice for somebody to kind of be helping her she's more in a little bit of a daze we'll say it's like yeah. a more like a haze and less like a physical uh ailment uh but sh uh she that leans a little like bit heavier on the, the perfect you know. uh the perfect job for malik yeah exactly uh, and she loves it uh you know she swoons a smidge uh as it all goes down and um you take point. Uh, I'm going to need some rolls from the group. In fact, why don't, um, since you're going first, you would be the one to like set off stealth. So why don't you roll for uh, 
that towel uh, for the group. Um, Dot, you always describe scenes with Lamara, and it paints a picture in my head of the most comical <laughs> shit ever. And like, I just, I just see like Malik has like one of her arms over him, right, like carrying, and she looks up, and everything has that like rose tinted and like its soft <laughs> edges, right, like the, yeah. like the, oh my god, my <laughs> prince anime, and then it cuts back to Malik and is like, fires. Yes, that's basically uh, Lamara's existence, uh, you know. <laughs> So Here I don't have infiltration. <laughs> so we're just gonna roll agility. Great. Uh, yeah. Yep. Um. Go for it. No. Nope. Ah. That's okay. Um. It's hard to move with stealth in this place. You're out in the open. Yeah. And the fact of the matter is, um, your ship is on a do- an open dock. Um. So, uh, you move along rather quickly you're not sure if anybody spots you you don't see anyone how about that okay. um uh in your immediate vicinity you f- can see that all the caution lights are like on and run- on the running boards right and they're like flashing um though there's no like direct alarm going off um if any of you stop to check a map or like a, a terminal you can see that there are sections of the coriolis that have now been blocked off like the vessel has like doors have come down to airtight seal because there's now a massive leak uh, on one edge of it. Um, it does seem like it was attacked in some way. Um, but you make it to the docks. And as you get there, you can see uh, immediately uh, guns come up as Tony and his crew are holding down the opposite side of the barricade. It's just us, Tony. Just us. He goes, what are you doing? Get, we- move! Yeah, we got we got to get to our ship. Um, he points. The ship is still there, though. You can actually see now because the cellar is um, it's not like open air. Obviously, there's a it's 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 got to be airtight for you to be able to even walk in here. But you can see through the kind of bluish shield that it uses to to create that uh, airtight system. On the outside, there are vessels like zooming about. They have not hit the cellar or the uh, this docking system proper. Um, but uh, there cool. seems to be activity on the outside. Um, and he goes, quick, quick, quick. Yeah, so we'll, we'll run to the ship. Um, Get everybody uh, in as quickly as possible. Yeah, you begin ev- getting everybody in. And just as uh, you hit the gangway, um, the first kind of uh, laser shot comes out of the doorway that goes deeper back into Coriolis from the way that you came. Uh, and two drone drones, like hovering drones, they're kind of large, uh, come through the door and begin firing um, across barricades at Tony and his crew, and they begin uh, a firefight. I'm single-minded, get my crew on the board, uh, start up the ship, we got to get down to Kua. Great. Uh, yeah. Before, though... You uh, you said that Sue provided us some stuff. Yeah, you have, have like a open box of gear. Yeah. Can I have a grenade um to help assist Tony? I can't leave Tony mm. hanging like that. You know what? In, why, in why, lieu of, why can't you? In lieu of Sewell, because <laughs> Sewell would have given you a grenade. We have a we have a deep history on this show. We have <laughs> a big history of grenades here. Uh, and and because it is such a beautiful storytelling moment, in fact, right there on top is a single grenade. Perfect. I I would like to take it and just kind of like lob it over there and look look over to Tony and just be like <laughs> and wait for it to ex- um, like it just run off. Okay, so you I need you to uh you gotta make the throw to see how good yeah. it is because oh. you are throwing it over their heads. So I'm going to get a ranged combat attack from from No No you're not. You're just gonna get a I have two dice. I have two <laughs> dice. Two dice. This is this is not gonna end well. Two dice. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Holy shit! Okay. You son of a bitch. Okay. You can't son even crit. <laughs> but I rolled a max full. So you are Power easily gonna love. do what what you wanted to accomplish, and you 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 all watch as Tamir stops running, uh, grabs a grenade, flicks the pin out of it, um, and lobs it. Perfect. It goes over Tony's head as he goes, Tony. 
And Tony turns, they all guns in the air, watch it fly slow motion over their head as it lands between the two drones right on the floor. And as it does, it Tony and his crew take cover from behind the barrier. Uh, what a beautiful moment. You don't know if the drones are done, but you know you definitely did a lot of damage as uh, the the door uh, to the Defiant <laughs> closes up and you're all on board. And as you all rush into the main area, standing before you is a person, a figure. Um, I'm going to play another darkness point to play a card, the last remaining card on the board, which is the technician. Um, that... Uh, is given to us by the uh, the machine deck that I made up because it doesn't exist. Um, and none of you know this figure. Actually, Malik, you might know this figure, uh, but the rest of you have never seen this figure before. A um, humanoid, maybe female, uh, pulls back a dark kind of uh, thick hood. Uh, and as they do, you can see the lower half of their jaw is almost entirely mechanical as if it has been removed and replaced um, behind the eyes um, and along the neck stem, more tech and wires. Um, Tubit uh, actually stands in front of you. Uh, of course, Tamir being the only person to actually truly recognize who this is. What are you doing here? You're supposed to be on sabbatical my, my time, time is up, up. I, I have, have been sent, sent as, as the machine's machine. emissary conversation in the cockpit everything's on fire oh you know what I read that wrong okay come on uh, let's go I guess <laughs> yeah okay um uh Two bit simply, they don't move. They just watch you all do whatever it is you're going to do. Sit down. What, what would you all like to do? Oh, I'm turning on the 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 uh, what's it called ship and <laughs> getting <laughs> off. Okay, I <laughs> think. <laughs> yeah, the I imagine that there's around. like is the thing that we're on like half the time. There's like oh no conversation God. as everybody rushes in. Um, you know, uh, Malik's like chop chop. Everybody kind of scatters to their places, whether that's a seat or the cockpit. Uh, Tao begins flipping all of the switches in the order they need to be flipped. Uh, it powers up. Uh, I'm going to need a check from you, um, a piloting check. Okay, and that has, hold on, double checking all my, all my things, uh, pl uh, plus one for a blessed ship, uh, do I get a plus two for the antimatter robots on maneuverability? Um, for the maneuverability, yes, because this is about escaping, uh, not uh, shooting at the moment. Okay, and um, I also turn on uh the stealth technology to try to see Ooh, okay. if i can kind of uh sneak in under all of the rest of the havoc going on outside i am going to take the chaos to my advantage i've been in firefights yep. before i'll give you that um that makes a lot of sense so uh, again uh you do as you flip it on this kind of um shield technology that like reflects what's around it back right to kind of create the illusion of stealth technology uh passes over the ship and uh you boot it up let's get your piloting check okay. the stealth technology I, won't add anything yet yeah i if i correct i counted correctly that's a plus three total correct Five successes. Oh, oh man, that's really good. Okay, um, the, roll. yeah, y'all are on a roll. This is so beautiful. So the ship uh, beautifully departs, and as it goes to take off, you can see that the the Oculus that opens up to like let you out uh, begins uh, the trajectory to do so. And over comms, uh, you hear Tony. Um, hey, do us a favor. On your way out, blow up the main battery for the gate. That way nobody gets in or out. You got it, Tony. And you, of course, hear fire once yeah. again in the background. Um, 
and he can't he can't sign he can't sign off without saying I love you, Tamia. Over and out. <laughs> that, that's a little fast, right? <laughs> Firing we down in the docks. We could, I, we could die, like, now. Uh... I'm pretty sure you proposed to him first. Um, anyways, uh, <laughs> my, my question to uh, Dot as GM yes. is um, I know my crew and I know the strengths and weaknesses and I also know my ship who who would be best to send to do the uh, blowy uppy bit I will allow you all to tell me who has in this case the highest um, it will be a ranged combat attack so whoever has the next oh. highest ranged combat is that a, a specific thing i don't remember it's that going be... it's going malik. to be the oh, it is, yeah, yeah malik yeah it would be malik yeah. um i mean okay. two, two bit is also technically i, I have board. a i have a six total oh shit that's actually pretty high yeah um, that's really good <laughs> yeah i think let yeah, me just check i don't uh, oh, I'm just i have a, a seven <laughs> so i mean really you're <laughs> i'm just a technician at space by pew pew Listen, <laughs> Malik was a criminal. He was a criminal. <laughs> it's true. Uh, Malik, you support. you basically hear the call. Tao puts it out on the comms and uh, you go and take uh, the gunner position. Um, the Oculus uh, finishes opening up and as you pass through the other side, um, Tao maybe slows <clears throat> just a little bit to allow you to take the shot. Um the the setup is perfect, so uh, you can take a plus one basically with her help from that damn critical success. I say a crit. There you go. Yeah. So I imagine it's kind of like you like kind of spin in space. Uh, that's all you needed was a single success, and you turn, and the battery kind of sits there on the edge of this steel wall before the uh, kind of uh, uh, a barrier uh, begins, where the Oculus opens up and. Uh, <laughs> And it kind of explodes in silence into space. And you can see that the Oculus goes from blue to red, uh, the kind of wall does. And um, it is impenetrable at this point as it kind of reseals itself shut. Nobody can come in or out. And just on the other side, you still see the light beams of uh, kind of laser fire on the docks. Uh, as we continue on, uh, I'm going to essentially make straight for Kua. Um going for little Algol as uh, sneakily as possible. Um, but Great. I, it's not I, hard because as you pull out and spin it back around, you can see that there's a firefight happening in space between the homogeny and a bunch of the white butterfly vessels. Um, Perfect. You, uh, with your stealth technology, they are not focused on you. They don't even know that, in fact, that you are there. Um, as you pass through, uh, it's a brilliant piloting check, uh, and you pass through basically underneath the battle undetected as you head towards the surface. From the, uh, from up here, you can actually see Kua below you um, because the monolith actually juts above the cloud line, uh, just the kind of point of it. And um, from the ground, you can see there are some uh, lights going off as if there are small explosions near the base of the monolith. Um, but right now, it seems like heavy cloud coverage over the swamp area, so you're unable to see a lot of the cities um, from, from this high up as you begin to make your descent. It will be about 10 minutes. At some point, Malik has come back to the cockpit, strapped back in to the comms officer seat. I think the entire time, Malia is specifically either, I think mostly in the the uh, the, the 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 temple or coming out. And uh, once things have settled in, making tea for everybody just to calm people's nerves. Well, uh, joining you in the mess hall, like once all of this happens, and uh, Two Bit walks in and sits down in the main mess hall. Uh, does not initiate conversation, uh, sits rather stoically, but sits there nonetheless as you make tea while all this goes down uh, with the like shooting and the Oculus and pulling that's out into space do. battle. Yeah, hey, that's perfect. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think as, as things are going around, uh, she comes up and uh, she's a little apprehensive. She kind of, Alia's looking at Tubit and just not exactly sure what to do because uh, she's 
on a different path of a mystic than she is. But then finally she sits down in front of her and hands her, goes, um, would you like some tea? Thank you. My body does not require normal sustenance. Oh, um, well, perhaps for just the taste, but if not, I understand. Her whole bottom jaw is steel. <laughs> so, like, you don't even know if she can swallow it. Like, you just know the whole bottom jaw is steel. And um, there, there's not really a smile per se, but you can see that... Um, one of the eyes is still very human mm -hmm. um, and kind of looks at you with a bit of, of, of shared empathy. She is also a mystic. So yeah. um, I think I would reach out like uh, when I first met or was it was it when I first met? I remember one time reaching out to Tal and Tamir with like just kind of like having a handshake th using my mystic powers, kind of like the, hey, I know you, I, I see you kind of a thing. Um, and kind of reaches out in that way. I'll just hold it. The warmth is comforting. Oh, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad at least it, that could, it could help in that way. Um, could I ask why you are... Well, no, first off, wrong approach. I'm sorry. Um, it's wonderful to finally meet you. I've been told much about you from Tamir and, uh, and, and the Strange. path you're on. Tamir was supposed to keep my existence a secret. Wait, hold up. Did she get... I thought, yeah, right, that Atalia was... I mean, Alia was told a little bit about her. You were right? told. You, I think that it has slowly crept up that yeah. there's this two-bit person, but nobody's ever... Nobody's Tam ever. Tamir has never right? mentioned two-bit. You know about Ari. Oh. You do okay. not so, know about two-bit from there we Tamir. Go. Right, right, mm -hmm. right. I've heard... Okay. Uh, sorry. Correction. I've heard much about you and the, at least the legends or the myths. Just stories. Well, even if 1% of those are true, you, you are someone who's quite amazing. Thank you, I think. But I do not seek praise. I have a purpose. Of course, I. I just, I've never heard of anybody who has taken this path as you have, and I'm just, I guess, uh, curious and excited and just impressed. I did not start planning to be an emissary. Most of us do not. I understand, and... I meant more along your lines of the path of mystic that you have taken, but I'm sorry, I, I'm having a tough time conversing. It's been a while seeing any other mystic and- You are referring to my augmentations. Uh, yes, I've just always been told that being a mystic meant being away from technology and not using it, at least from what I understood. I've, that I is a see. very small definition of what it means to be a mystic then. I do have much to learn. I'm still on the path. And you're walking it with grace. It's, it's wonderful to have you here. Thank you for joining us. I think I shall smell it. Oh, please. Let and me you see it. her like press something on the edge of her nose uh, and uh, the interior of the nostril like flips it, like uh, it lights up and changes and she takes a smell. Um, Hmm. And she kind of sits with herself as she kind of, uh, this robot, uh, half, half, I don't know what they are. They're half a uh, uh, cyborg, really, uh, mm -hmm. sits here and smells uh, this, this tea, though not able to drink it, of course. Well, if there's anything else I can provide, I, I know maybe perhaps food is not something, but anything I can do to make you comfortable while you're here. I'm simply interested in arriving on the surface in time. Okay. Uh, 
And Ali was like struggling at this point going, I clearly am failing miserably at this social interaction. <laughs> it's okay. Two bits, not really a social, I, know, I mean, you know, Alia's that's not time, your fault. <laughs> but it's, I'll do Alia, it is. She's like, damn, I'm failing miserably here. Um, um, yes. We have a temple if you, if you need to, if you would like to pray or to meditate and use that space. Um, I could show you there if you want. That would be nice, but I would like to wait to meet the rest of the crew. I imagine there will be many, many questions, and I have nothing to hide. A little clarity in this time would be much appreciated, I'm sure. If I may ask, I've not had much chance to really look into all of this, but becoming an emissary, do you... Do you know what, we, what the next steps are for us? What do we need to do? I feel like we have an inkling or a sort of a path, but... There is no guide or rules or task list to give enough badges to earn such a title. You're chosen by the icon. It could be any follower. Well, then, before everybody gets here, perhaps I could seek your guidance on something else. And then all there is no, no no time like the present, present. or so sure. I've been told. <laughs> That's fair. Well, uh, and then she reaches into her satchel and pulls out the orb and sets it in front of Tubit. Um. <laughs> there's uh two bits head actually kind of tips to the side you hear kind of uh hydraulics in the neck kind of give um and there's deep contemplation there there are not words or ums or even uh, the sputter of a breath uh, at the the sight of this thing what, what is it it's a vessel for the gin and inside of it is a chin that we had to uh, exercise from one of our crew members. And this is where she, we ended up housing her. Jin. Yes. I've never come across a Jin in all my many years. <laughs> well, this is the second one we've come across, apparently. Seems that you have a bit of a way of drawing them in. Yes, unfortunately. But now that we have it here, I don't know what to do with it. It concerns me because the reach it has, the effect and the damage it has done to my, my family here, one of them still having long lasting effects that digs into her soul, it feels. And I don't know if I can reach in and break that bond finally and perhaps put it to good use or would it be better to just bury it somewhere deep and pray no one will ever find it? Do you believe in fate, Thalia? <laughs> well. I did, and now I feel like I've felt it more. Do you know when, when, when the machine came to me and told me my purpose? I understood, but I questioned myself as well. My worthiness, whether or not I was capable of handling such things. And then I realized that is not my job. I must do with what I am given and trust that the universe will put me exactly where I am supposed to be. So you, Alia, have been visited by two jinns in a single lifetime and have been made purpose over this. 
I cannot tell you what to do with it. It is your choice, your decision, and your responsibility. You see Alia look concerned for a bit and then look at her again and just, <sighs> I was afraid of that. Fear will not serve you, Alia. What do you fear? My family being hurt and innocence being hurt through my inaction and my action. Not knowing that is a very I'm... large fear instilled by the unknown. The unknown is the darkness. It is not your job as a mystic to carry it into the world. You do not carry fear. You are a harbinger of hope and light where there is none. We all are. So if you give in now to fear, what is it that you are carrying into this battle? You're right. Thank you. I feel I know what I must do with it, but... Could I ask for your support if, if I try? Why do you think that I am here, Alia? if not to support your team's efforts. If you don't mind, then I would like to get in touch with the djinn. I feel that we are, as I understand it, missing one emissary still to make this plan work. And unless we somehow magically find one or they happen to come upon us like you have, we are out of luck there. And perhaps a substitute could be used. One with immense power that can change their very form and carry out that purpose. Perhaps. I guess, I guess we will see what decisions you make. Well, before I take this action, I definitely still would like to consult my crew, but I feel this is, I feel this is the only path we have, at least in one way. But if I do take that decision, could I ask for you to be beside me and, and assist? I'm not sure I'm able to handle this level of malice. What makes you think that the djinn is full of malice? We try to hurt. It, it's, its purpose from the start has been to harm and use its powers to attack, at least from what I understood. I'm not trying to imply that it is inherently evil, but that has been its actions. It has... You said you pulled it from someone. Yes, one of our crew members. And she still has effects lingering in her from this. Yes, the doctor. Yes, her, Umara. The doctor was affected long before there was a jinn inside her. I used to visit her when she was ill on Coriolis. She did not know most of the time. They kept her heavily drugged. But she would write upon her walls prophecies and We've seen it. future visions. Do you think she's then originally a mystic, perhaps? There are many roles in this world. It is not simply always mystic and not mystic. Prophets have existed for decades, centuries even. In fact, there are thousands of prophecies written into crystal balls stored down on the planet we are going into. Prophecies that may never be fulfilled because of the decisions of 
maybe a single person or maybe thousands of people. Lamara is singly handed a opportunity. She is a prophet. You can see Alio visibly relax from hearing that. Oh, thank God. I, you're right. I just, with everything that we have gone through and all the things we have seen, I just feel, feel so much that the darkness is at the hand of everything, but sometimes the answer is much simpler. The darkness does not have a handle on anything. It seeks to gain one. We are not losing earlier. Thank you. I, I needed to hear this. Thank you. About this time, <clears throat> she puts the, the kind of tea down, not having drank any of it. Um, Tal, you are on basically a direct course. Where are you headed before I give the reins over to the other half of the crew to see what you've been up to? Um, I am headed for a uh, little algal. Um, I am going with the intention of trying to find, uh, trying to connect with somebody that I've, I've met before, uh, cause I've made this trip a time or two. Um, so okay. we're just gonna hope. Um, all right. Well, um, so, uh, you should all see the map in roll 20 of the monolith and the surrounding city. Um, little algo uh, sits on a delta uh, that pours in from these swamps, and as uh, you grow ever closer, you can see it is storming. It is this is a very wet place. Um, it's storming, uh, and the clouds are thick. Uh, but you are gonna, you still have some time, right? Like once you set the course, you had you had ten minutes. So while Alia and Tubit have this this moment over tea, uh, what do the three of you do? Uh, Probably. Oh, go ahead. Uh, Malik Malik has set all of the comm stuff to like auto, um, and he is ironically uh, like mother henning uh, over um, uh, uh, over Lamara. Uh, like he has her in the med bay, uh, and he's uh, trying to get her to sit down like a toddler in the chair. Uh, and he's like looking for things and ignoring her, telling him where they are uh, as he's <laughs> trying to get her like back down uh because he definitely remembered she had like three days left on that helmet thing uh and he doesn't know well, how the helmet yeah. works yeah that's actually super duper true um how do i want to do this you know what i got darkness to spend um i'm gonna spend another darkness to say uh, uh lamara's gonna roll on the mind meme table Oop. Three. I have to go to another book, y'all. I'm so sorry. Is that the right one? <laughs> so many books. Uh, let's see. My memes will be back here. Huh? Um, yeah, she kind of putters about, and you can see she's up and moving. So physically, she seems like she's all right. Um, she seems a little, uh, like I said, spacey. Uh, you can see that she kind of goes around and fixes some stuff and acts like she's going to do something and then loses interest in it and then goes to something else. Uh, as soon as you set her down, she's up again. Um, it's like trying to get a kid at the doctor's office to sit still long enough to like draw blood. You know what I mean? Yes. I know exactly what Here you mean. Um, oh my God. This is the third. This will be the second time she's gone through this. Um. Okay. Oh no, uh, our yeah. doctor. She's okay. broken. <laughs> she's been broken for a long time, y'all. She just keeps getting more broken. Okay. Um. She she doesn't smile or talk. She just kind of walks around in this melancholic state. And then she goes over to a cabinet and tries to pull on it and it's locked. And there's a moment where she thinks about where the key is and goes over to the drawer and grabs it um, and unlocks it and looks in and it's empty. She doesn't move, she freezes as she looks into this empty filing cabinet drawer where something clearly used to be. Uh, 
Hmm. Did Malik see Alia take that out of there? Who was with you when you took that out, Alia? It was, it was, it was, it was, it was when she w- went under the helmet. So it, you would have been there when he, when she grabbed it. Did I, sorry, I, I got distracted. What did I take out? When the, Alia well, pulled the, the orb, the orb came and Malik was there with you. Yeah. Because yeah. it was when she was under the helmet. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think, um, well, I, I think I even specifically showed it to Malik. Yeah. Right? Yes. That, that was there. And that, she, so Alia then took it with her. At that point. Yeah. Uh, so Malik sees her go in that cabinet um, and playing stupid. He says, what um, what are you looking for? I guess nothing. It's not there anymore. There's no point. W- what was it? It was a. It was a. It was important to me. What, what was it? It was perfect. And scary. And mine. It was mine. Yeah, yeah, but what was it, though? Maybe maybe it, like, fell out. We, we, we did get attacked while you were in the helmet. Did it break? I don't know what it was. You didn't tell me what it is yet. You didn't break it, did you? I don't know what it is. There's you not even a point anymore. She stands up and goes over to the wall and just puts her head against it. If you tell me what it looks like, I can help you find it. It's shiny and dark and beautiful all at the same time. Okay. I, okay. I, I need, like, adjectives. Like, what is it? Like, is it round? Is it, like... Big? Yes, you have seen it. Is it small? Is it... You, where is, is it? How big is it? Uh, you say when. You saw it. Did you see it? I don't know what it is. You're not actually saying any nouns. I have to go find it. Okay, I'll just follow you and be surprised when I see it. <laughs> and she, like, opens the door and begins kind of... Uh, monotonously, like, walking, hands by her side. Very not Lamara. No pep in the step. The ponytail hangs perfectly. It doesn't even bob about. Um, and, um, she walks very slowly kind of towards the mess hall, and she she looks as if she's looking for it, but she doesn't have the, the strength or the wherewithal to actually search for it, you know? Um, Tal, Tamir, what are you doing <laughs> while Malik follows, uh, Lamara? I'm flying the craft. You can put it on autopilot if you would like. You are basically stealth under. Nobody has detected you, but that's up. That is up to Tal. Uh, we're a little on edge right now. Autopilot's not going to cut it. <laughs> Good call. All right. Uh, what about Tamir? Yeah, I think Tamir's literally just doing his job. Like he wants to talk to Tubit, but like they have ten minutes to prep for this mission. You have, you had the crate, right? A stuff mm-hmm. in the crate. You have a few things. You would not be surprised that there are in fact five spider suits. One for each of you. There are, um, that, that will help you climb. There are some other things like, uh, grappling hook guns, not five more grenades. Uh, most of this looks like climbing equipment and c- climbing gear. Um, most of it, it, there's like a piece that goes on your back that has like a a wire, right? That'll come out. So you have kind of a couple like things you can all wear. Those sticky things you like turn and release and can climb up glass and stuff like that. A, a box full of climbing gear. We're going to need to get everybody to suit up. These will likely be helpful. Oh, and he holds up another skin tight suit. Displeased. Look, they're more comfortable than they look. Uh, and uh, right there, Tal will just start suiting up. Um, 
Yep. Zoop, zoop. I mean, you can wear it like technically over your clothes if you want to. Um, it'll be a little, yeah. you know, bu- bunchy in a few places, but it, it once you get it on, it kind of like seals to your body. Right. Um, so uh, it'll press a lot of your clothing down. So. Yeah. You can do that. Um, help Tamir get in his. Uh, so. You doing okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. What, what about you? Uh, I am very nervous. I can see that. Is there anything I could do? Anything that you need? I don't, I don't know. Like looking down around the the base of the monolith, it looked like there was fighting and stuff. So who the heck knows what we're gonna find when we get down there? It's not going to matter what we find. It's being able to get all these people away from the monolith and getting us inside. Uh, I'd like to get inside first. Though, if we get people away from it, then it's going to be easier to to get through without being seen. Though, with, like, leaving Coriolis, if we have the uh, confusion of everything else around us, then it makes it a lot easier not to see people climbing up the side of the monolith. They're going to be worried about getting their people away from the monolith. At least I would hope so. I'm oof. I hope so too. When are we do we should we evacuate first or after? I guess it's gonna take a while to evacuate the monolith. As many people as we can. Get them out as soon as possible. I, I don't see why we can't just have Malik fake some sort of direct attack like the, like the equivalent of a nuclear bomb attack at directed at the monolith i mean i guess it could do that he's probably not doing anything useful right now anyways likely <laughs> Bowser. You see what I deal with? Our, uh, did you know Two Bit was going to be here? No, I did not. It, I never thought I would see Two Bit again. To be honest, she was supposed to be hidden, and safe, able to live a life for once. But she says she's an emissary. I could see that. She radiates with power. I hear it every time that that I've ever been near her. It sings in my head. Well, better her than you. Yeah. I'm okay with this. (laughs) You know, for about 13 or 14 hours, I was almost completely convinced that you were the emissary. Thank you for having faith in me, but I am the emissary. No, I I mean, you're like half machine by now, right? Uh Wait, 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 half? half, I'm pretty sure that your body was reassembled far much more in those medical records than mine were. (laughs) I just have a couple extra wires. They're all in your head, too. All right. Well, I'm really, really glad that uh, you're not the emissary, though. It felt a little weird aren't they supposed to be like religious or something like 
super pious? I think uh, there is this assumption that priests and mystics are anybody who holds a certain level of faith in the icons that they are supposed to live a certain way. But according to the machine, we, we pilot our own ships. There is no right or wrong way to worship or follow or practice a belief. It's in our hands. The icons are rarely to blame. We make choices, as we've made choices time after time after time. And we're here now because of a choice that we made. Would you change anything you've uh, decided so far? Given the chance, of course. There's like this boyish smirk on his face for a second as he kind of like sheepishly looks down and he takes Tal's hands into his. I would have been braver. I told you how I felt much sooner. Well. Okay. That's acceptable. Do you want to meet too bit? Um, I really, I, I'm very nervous about getting too far away from this specific spot right here. We're like standing in the cockpit still, like only a few steps away from, <laughs> from my seat because Tal won't go any further. <laughs> um, yeah so like if you want to bring them in here uh that'd be cool or like you know we can talk later we're kind of in the middle of stuff uh, if tubit is here i'm sure she has information that we are going to desperately need tubit only ever appears when she intends to appear no matter how hard or wide i search for her She comes when she wants to. I can summon everybody, but you are the captain. We have comms. <laughs> Just in case you forget. Yeah, but like, I think Emissary outranks Captain. This is your ship, Captain Talia Tuma. Bringing out the full name. Well, I mean okay. it. Go ahead. Be the captain that you've already been. Hey, uh, two bit. We're gonna land in a minute, but could could you come here and mm -hmm. please? <laughs> Tao comes over the comms as. <clears throat> Lumara and Malik walk in. Malik following Lumara. Uh, she seems a little out of it, Alia, uh, as Tubit puts the cup like down on the table. Uh, and you all hear at the same time Tal come over the intercom and uh, Tubit looks, taking in Lamara, taking in Malik, stands, leaves the tea behind, and walks towards cockpit. Alia follow follows and she has she's already at that point put the orb back in the pouch and sung over the side uh malik takes in tuba at the same time and i think like the realization like he like looks at her and like his head cocks the side a little bit because she didn't have a metal face when he saw her uh and he like and then he takes like a half step back from lamara and just looks to alia and goes Alia right, uh, 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 looks at him. She looks at him confused for a second. And, and Lamara goes, "Have you seen it?" 
I've lost something. Have who's you seen she it? Ask, who's she asking? Straight to Alia. Oh. Maybe even to Tupid. It's more like the general, like, I've lost something. I could. And she kind of looks at, like, looks a little confused for a second and concerned. And he goes, what, what did you lose? It's very beautiful and important to me. Oh, my dear, I, I think it caused you harm and it must no. have been lost. Lost? I'm going to find it. Would you help me find it? I'll help you find what you need, my dear. I'm going to keep looking. Tubit kind of continues walking and you see Lumara begins again, kind of daisily searching the space. I, uh, is she still in the cockpit? Uh, no, uh, this is the mess hall. Uh, oh, Tubin oh, is walking oh. towards the cockpit to Tal and Tamir. Oh, okay, okay. Um, I think uh, he lo she looks at the cockpit and then looks back at uh, Lamara and then walks up to her and goes, I'll help you look for whatever you've lost. But for now, perhaps we can use this time to focus on other things. We have some very pressing things to come to. And if we don't take care of it, we won't have the opportunity. What's the point? Are we not enough? Isn't Malik enough? She looks at Malik and then back at you. I guess. Just seems all very pointless, doesn't it? Not with you here. Not with seeing this family that we have. Is that not worth fighting for? But what's left when it's all done? Maybe it's just better to die. Oh, and she kind of walks off. I, I think uh, before yeah. she does, Alia like pulls her into a hug and keeps her there. She goes, I will do whatever it takes to get you what you lost. Can she doesn't you hug on? you back. Yeah, she doesn't hug you back. She just kind of stands there. Can you hold on to that hope until then? Do you trust me? I guess. How about this? Go to the cockpit. Be with the rest of them. They'll be here for you, okay? Yes. Maybe I lost it in the cockpit. Maybe you have. And she kind of uh, begins to slowly walk away. You are left staring at Malik. The Jin has had too much of a hold on her. I cannot let this continue. She needed to be under that healing helmet, whatever it is, longer. But it's clear that it has not completely healed her. Yeah, it, it had like three days left. You got to figure out that crystal ball thing. Uh. <laughs> uh, I intend to. And you see for the first time, <clears throat> not first time, but like there's a change in her demeanor. Up till now, she felt uncertain and not sure what to do next. But after seeing Lumara, <clears throat> sorry, Lumara, the way she is, um, you see this level of determination come across her face and she goes, take care of her until then, okay? I'm sure they need you in the cockpit. I have something I need to take care of. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I got it. And he follows. And <clears throat> instead of going to the cockpit, Alia goes to the temple. With the, With the, the orb. orb? Yeah. And we part for a second as we head back to the cockpit and... Uh, Tubit arrives first, very promptly by Lamara, who immediately arrives and goes, have you seen it? I've lost something. What is it? It's, it's very important to me. It's about this big? Yes. Okay. What, what shape is it? 
or okay so it's okay orb um what what's in it something beautiful and scary and powerful and mine I know what we put the 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 thing in, right? Yeah, you know, Alia. Was... You know, Alia has it, which of course is the next person. No, I'm so sorry. It's not arrive. The next person to arrive is Malik. No, Alia, but you know, Alia has it. Yeah. Um. You know what? I'm I'm sure it's safe somewhere. It's it's got to be somewhere. It's it's fine. Yes. Uh, well, well, you know what, though? We're in the middle of a really, really important mission. Um, and okay. if we succeed on the mission, then we're going to save a bunch of people. And also, I'll help you look for the thing that you lost. Okay, I guess. And she kind of <laughs> turns around and like leans on the wall in this melancholic way. And stares off into the distance. Tubit kind of looks at her. Uh, there's no expression that changes. Just like takes Lamara in as Malik kind of arrives. Um, but Tubit stands in kind of the doorway of the cockpit uh, upon your command. Uh, hi, I'm I'm Tal. Captain. Yes, Tal. You are yeah. the captain of this vessel. I am Tubit. It's nice to meet you. Um, I've heard a vague thing or two about you at one point. Um, so it's nice to have a more clear picture of you. I hope it is satisfying. Yeah, sorry. Um, I, um, I don't exactly know what uh, we're doing here aside from doing everything we can to get from where we're going to land and hopefully in Lilogal to where uh, to Tamir, where, where's that map that you have of the monolith? Uh, we, we need to get you into the monolith, but uh, I, I don't know what we're going to encounter between the two places do you yes. have any idea what do you know of the monolith we know it's a weapon uh we know a that well a, a weapon is a word for many things that can be used against something else It seems that you have been misinformed. The monolith is not a weapon. It is a shield. Built many generations ago, long before any of the human ships arrived. Created by the icons. To keep the darkness at bay. I imagine that a shield can be used as a weapon. But that is not his intended purpose. The First Horizon has come to turn them on in their own way. Can you not hear it as we get closer? Can the song. I? <laughs> uh, you can roll <clears throat> a mystic ability check right now, those that can, to see if you can hear what she is talking about. I got a two. Hey. Um, you don't hear it at first, uh, Tamir, 
uh, but when Tubit tells you to kind of like listen, you actually do think that you hear something, the song of the monolith, uh, this, this ringing, you've heard it before. You heard it around the emissary, the time that they died in the swamps, uh, the Sultra swamps, which you are about to pass over. You, you heard it once before on the other side of the galaxy, once in a vision, this song that rings out. And now you know that it has been coming from the monolith. And it's not just singing, it's calling. Now that you can hear it, you feel this draw, this want uh, to come to the monolith. And Tubit simply continues. You do hear it. The song. It pulls at the mystics, drawing everyone to the monolith. The First Horizon is not interested in us having a shield. They're interested in tearing them down. I have been sent by the machine to turn this monolith on. I have also been sent with a message. The machine is a calculating and wise icon, often devoid of empathy, but not entirely. Every icon, everyone has an emissary that walks this plane. When I am gone, she would like it to be Tamir. But the choice is yours. So I come bearing information and an offering. The other emissaries have chosen their replacements. We will each perish. You, you were supposed to ride off into the sunset and live a life. I am. This is the life chosen. For My you great or by purpose. You. It was not thrust upon me. I am in no way forced. I too was offered the same as Tamir. I said yes. I could go rot away like every other machine in this galaxy. Or I can be much more. This is my purpose. This is why I'm here. To turn on the monolith. You can help me or not. But once we land, this is where I'm going. Of course we will help. We were very much misinformed, though. This was to be a weapon pointed at Coriolis. It is pointed at Coriolis, because that is where they built it. I do not know what happens when it is turned on. It has not been turned on in any amount of time that our species has lived here. It is turned on at the darkest of moments. And the darkness is riding the wake of the First Horizon vessels. They thought by destroying the emissaries, they would stop us from turning them on. Tamir turns to Tal. Captain. There are very few people in this universe that I trust.
I don't believe that we should be destroying the monolith as intended. If Tubit says we are to turn it on, we are to turn it on. You act like I need more persuasion. Of course, we're going to turn it the fuck on. <laughs> Look, I'm trying to help people. We were just misinformed. Then we will help you too, but what, what can we do? What do you need? We have supplies, we have blueprints, we have a plan to get to and inside the monolith. This must be the reason why she sent me to you. I need to get inside, which will be difficult. Rumor has it that the streets nearest the monolith, the Covenant City itself is currently flooded by mystics. Some in their right mind and some not, all being drawn towards the monolith. It has caused disruption, civil unrest. The homogeny fights back, concerned that they will lose their dear home. We well, want to evacuate. Oh, sorry. If anyone can get through a crowd, to mirror. It will be difficult. And I imagine that the First Horizon will attempt to stop us at all costs. And we will get you to the monolith at all costs. This we've already decided long ago. Is this all of us? Tubit kind of looks around and sees that Alia is in fact missing. Where is Alia? <laughs> Camera uh, cut. <laughs> she, she's going to do a thing. Camera cut to Alia in this circular chapel. Small, but... Um, but very comforting um, and welcoming. Uh, pillows on the floor, uh, drapes where there can be. <clears throat> Alia, tell me, uh, what is it that you are doing here? You're muted. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> uh, seeing the level of desperation that <clears throat> Lamar is in and the fact that this orb has been it's clear to her that this has been put off way too long at this point that it's it's just something she has to do now she has to break this hold that the gin has on uh, whatever it is or however it is happening on on Lamara and finally basically face her fear as as uh Tupit had said not carry it into I into the world and before she does though She's going to pray to the Lady of Tears. Okay. Um, are you setting a blessing for yourself? Is that the goal? To add a plus yeah. one? Yeah. yeah. Essentially, um, she's yeah. praying for success. Uh, you see her close her eyes and then she goes, My lady, if you're hearing my words right now, I, I desperately need your help and guidance. We are at a precipice and... There is great turmoil here that we must get through. And this in front of me is one of the major causes. It is a turmoil for me as well and a fear that I hope to 
overcome with your with your blessing. You wait then, in silence and you can smell as you as you kind of put this blessing out and there's incense in the air and the orb sits in front of you and a quaint voice. Maybe it's a song at first and it almost radios in, tunes in. And the Lady of the Tears, you can feel a hand that is not there as it brushes your cheek. She says, Alia, remember, demons are bound by laws. Their existence in this place has structure in a way that your faith does not. Do not fear, my child. Thank you. And then she leans forward and concentrates and like she grabs onto the ball and then. Okay, I'm going to need a Bistic ability check to see if you actually managed to connect. Oh, gosh. Okay. Uh, Okay. Uh, Come on, baby. Oops. One, two, three. Oh, come on. Come on. You try to connect to this um, ball and you can feel it almost the way that those like um, I always they're those like electricity balls where you put your hands on them and it kind of touches the edge where your fingers touch. It does Uh this, but not with electricity, with the black smoke kind of on the inside as Mm -hmm. it tries to make contact with you and you try and you try, but to no success, it's you're not sure if the jinn doesn't want to communicate with you or if the vessel is simply too strong. I'm darkness point dot. Okay. Ah, oh, come on, baby. Come on. Give it to me. Ah, oh, th- okay. I'll take it. <laughs> okay. Um, oh. A success. As you begin to connect, you can feel your mind being drawn from this place would into... I, would, wait, quick question. Would the blessing I've had helped in that first ability? Uh, How would that have worked? Yeah, that's oh. uh, you're you're right. You would have you could have added a plus one to that if you didn't uh, in did the role. Not. So that the would have been a one, a limited success. So we don't have to spend that darkness point, which is oh, fine because oh, okay. I'm going to spend a darkness point because that was in fact a limited success. Okay. You do begin to connect with it, and you can feel yourself being drawn. And you've been you kind of went through a similar process when you attempted the. Um, mm-hmm exorcism from from Lamara as you remember finding her in this box and going through this kind of process of her being lost in this space and as you begin to get drawn in I think I'm just gonna spin both corruption bars Fuck. Oh, oh, oh no oh I have made mistakes I regret everything pull me out I'm gonna spin both corruption bars from tonight You can feel it, and it's a strong connection. You did it, you did it, and it begins to crack the ball. Glass shatters across the space, and there's a moment as it rains to the ground, like deathly rain, this black spiral of clouded smoke that was touching your hands shoots up in front of you and takes form, your form. You stare at yourself, standing tall above you, looking down at you. You can see the eyes jet black. It's how you know it is not yourself. But the jinn has freed itself from this ball. You see Alia taken aback. um, And then quickly she remembers Tubit's words. And she recomposes herself and then looks at the jinn. He goes, It's been a while. Hello. My freer, my liberator. (laughs) What was your name again? Let's keep this a little bit more business than casual, perhaps. All right. What is it you wish, liberator? I wish. No, no, no. Before we get to that point, why are you still holding on to Lumara? What What do you mean? The previous vessel. I have no hold on Lumara. She was a very efficient vessel. 
she'd break down like other ones tend to. But I have not done anything to her. If I remember correctly, Liberator, you ripped me free of that vessel. Get you Shoved still. me in another one without completing your first wish. <laughs> well, I was immature and not so knowledgeable. And it wasn't time. And now? Well, that depends on the answer that you give. Why is she still earning, yearning for you? She seeks you out as if though it needs, she needs you. Oh, she liked it. I think a gene inside you comes with a fair share of benefits, Alia. Power, ah, charisma. Hmm. I guess maybe a little self-esteem. Doctor needed it. She was frail and strange. <laughs> she felt good. She misses me. Simple as that. Well, not if you want me to let hold of her, I can't do that for you because I don't have any hold upon her. Can I tell if she's... You alive? can roll a manipulation check. Mm, which I have zero. Oh, oh, okay, I'll take it. Okay, single success. Um, sh she does not seem like she is lying to you. She seems actually like she's, a, she's kind of enjoying the fact that... Uh, mm -hmm. You're actually giving her information that she didn't know, that she does not have any kind of hold. Uh, but she does say, you know, if you're really that concerned about it, you could always just wish me to let go of Lamara. <laughs> sure that I have no hold on her, right? If you don't trust me and all that. Well, I think you already gave me the answer I need. So I feel like we could get past that. She will learn to live without you. And what now? Do you wish this universe to continue to exist? I guess. I imagine yes. if it doesn't, I'll just go back to the one that I came from. Start it all over again. If you think this is my first time, planet side, well. You underestimate me, Alia. Uh, no, I, I know the capabilities that you have and what you hope for. I can also assure you that in this next crucial moments that we have, if we do not act for our best interests and work together mutually, you will never have another chance to come back here because there will be nothing to come back to. The first horizon is coming. It is here and it is seeking to destroy everything. Are you trying to convince me to fight in your little war in an essence then wish it because here's the thing alia i don't have to do anything until you make a wish i can't do anything so we can stand here and stare at each other i mean you or, are quite beautiful yes well you know Occasionally, I find a form I like more than my first one. Well, I'm flattered. <sighs> How about this? We need emissaries, and we're missing one. We have no choice and no chance. Can you, you become an emissary? <laughs> You want me to become an emissary? Interesting. Now that was a question, but not a wish, Alia. It depends if you can answer it truthfully. They will decide whether I can wish it or not. See, I feel like my answer will not be satisfactory to you. Because That's you're looking you. for one of those 
What's the word? Solution. I can do a fair share of many things. The wish often provides me the extra oomph to get the job done. That's how this works. <laughs> Y'all, do you want me to spend some more corruption? Some more <laughs> darkness points? I mean, it is the Jin that we have been waiting on. So I think I'm just going to scratch another dot in this point. And it's about this time you see her head kind of turn towards the wall and tip a little bit as if she hears or feels something. And she says, who else is here? Well, it is a ship, so therefore it has a crew. No. And from the behind, like one of the draped pieces of fabric, steps a child. <gasps> you no. She turns with squinted eyes and looks at you and she says, What have you done? I didn't know he was here. Hello, baby. She looks at this child. He smiles, and he looks at you, and he says, hi, sister. Can I? And he looks at you with such hope in his eyes that today may be the day. Oh! oh, oh, oh. You did this, KP. You 100% did this. And then, and then the Ollie, She goes, Alia, make your wish. You have to make your wish. KP, you I don't just make say, the wish. <laughs> I just want to say that when you try to Malik and go off the rails and not tell anyone your plan, you have to succeed. That's how this you don't get yelled at. Perfect. When you no, succeed this is at it. <laughs> this is so perfect. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> um, she goes, "Do it now, Alia. Make the wish. You have to. Can it's I... the only way." I look at I look at uh, Babir and I look at her and he goes, "If you wish to survive and if you wish to go it your way, I need you to give me all your information first. Tell me how we can save this, save the first horizon, save everybody in here the best we can. What can not... you offer me? A wish." Alia, one that I have offered you, one that you can take what and wish can for whatever I do you want. What can I do this wish that you can provide? I don't oh. know if you can fulfill this. You have given me no information that I can go off where I can trust you that you can accomplish what I need. Alia, I am a demon. If you think that wishes don't come with consequences, any actions don't come with consequences, you are wrong. No, you can take your wish. Or I suggest that you leave this space because only one of us gets to walk out of here. And Alia kind of prays once again to the Lady of Tears and looks at her and goes, you, I wish that you will do whatever it takes, even if it means sacrificing yourself to save the people of, the, of this horizon, to save the, the people of the third horizon, however long it takes, whatever you need, even if it is meaning that you must be in the way, whether it means you become an emissary You hear uh, Babir go, no, as he kind of reaches out because he can't consume her if she has to fulfill a wish. Um, again, they have their own laws, right? And she smiles, this you smile, this big smile. You wish for me to do whatever it takes to save the people of the Third Horizon. 
that includes the people of this ship. It includes my family, it includes me. And okay. you will bring no harm to them. I will bring no harm to them. Give me some time. This is a very large wish. I will see you again, Liberator. And the black smoke like <laughs> and disappears. When you turn around, the beer is gone. You see Alia collapse on the ground. The camera cuts back to the cockpit. This has all happened while you have all discussed it and uh, uh, Two-Bit has filled you in on things. Tal, you're coming into atmosphere. And as you do, you break through storm clouds with no problem. Uh, your piloting check was out of this world, so I'm not even gonna make you make another one. And as you come through, you can see the crowds of people on the streets of the Covenant City around the base of the monolith. You can see that there are guards surrounding the base of the monolith, keeping people out, uh, that there are vessels that are like circling. They don't see you because of your stealth technology, but like circling the monolith to keep uh, any air activity away. And you can see that parts of the city are burning. You don't know that if it's if it's from like large scale explosions, this doesn't look like a, a, a drop bombing. This looks like small scale uh, guerrilla warfare on the streets of all kinds of places. And as you fly over the monolith, you pass over uh, to goal and hang basically a hard right. And you can see the sultra swamps out to your left, everybody, through the dense rain. And you pass up and over into Little Algol to a field that you parked in once before um, nearby. And the ship lands with absolute uh, uh, secrecy. <clears throat> I think it's... They're landing in, and Tamir is like seeing all these people and having the new information about the mystics and knowing the mystics are being called there. Captain, knowing what we know now, I think we need to course correct. We don't need the people to flee. We don't need them to get away. I think we need them to come with us. They are a distraction. Oh, like these, distractions. These are <laughs> mystics. We are mystics. We have the son of Algol with us. And we carry an emissary in this vessel. Who best to protect us to ensure that what we need to done will be done. Our own people who hear this call, something to consider. Yeah, sure. Like, do that Sons of Algol thing. I, I don't know how you <laughs> people words and stuff. You realize I like wrote? I, I, I can't. So, I'm not ready to make a speech. I only just recently found out we were blowing stuff up. You made the speech when we were at the banquet. Yes, because sure there, there were other that sassy there were ass of yours. other words happening. I, I don't even know what we're doing here. I'm just here for the ride at this point. The plans changed like six times. Oh yeah, did we update Malik? Malik, okay, here's what's going on, and like he quickly like reiterates like. We're turning it on. Tubit is an emissary. I, I was, We're turning I was, it on. I was standing here the whole time Tubit was talking. You didn't even notice. I walked in after Lamara. So you know exactly what's going on. Why would you ask? Yeah, but like I barely know. It's a shield now? Who's going to believe that? That's not tangible. Uh, you know who's going to believe that? When they hear this son of Algol stand up and ask the people who've been oppressed all this time. Are they? Because Algo just got glassed. So who knows what my word stands for? Well, there's only one way to find out. Who, who would these people want to hurt more? Where would they find, want to find justice? 
and the person who is standing up against the oppressor or the oppressor. We suffered great misjustice in Algol, and the people of Algol continue to suffer today. But you, Malik, has struck a chord with these people, and only none of us could ever imagine. I, yeah, I, I guess, man. If that's what, if that's what needs to happen, then. I'll figure it out. And Look, as I, the, I, oh, I really I'm sorry, believe in you. <clears throat> okay, there's no need for sarcasm. I said I'd do it. I was being genuine. Who can tell? It was the sorry, I, I have ever a... said to you. Take the compliment. I believe in you. Thanks. Beep, boop, beep. Bob Malik, I'm sassy, so everybody must be sassy to me as well. Have you have you watched the show? <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, you touch down uh, as the you kind of take in the surroundings. You can see out the front. Um, most of Little Algol, in terms of the docks and everything nearby, are barren they are not the same place that you left you can tell there's been some fighting here but this is very far outside and if people are being drawn into the city you can imagine that a lot of the fighting is happening much closer um and uh i guess all of you uh take this moment in to redirect your plans as you have learned that this monolith is in fact a shield to keep the darkness at bay not in fact um a weapon um, I guess unless used as one. Uh, and as the gangway opens up and all of you probably suit up, we see you like zip up suits and do your thing. Um, are you taking the crawler into the city? What's the plan? Do we have one? I mean... You'll definitely get there a lot faster and you won't have to go straight through the streets if you take the crawler. Yeah, but it's not very sneaky. It feels like it's a great way to get people hurt and also garner a lot of attention when we're trying to sneak up. Great. So probably not. So you'll probably I, go on foot. Yeah, I think I think the the general plan will be to approach by foot and try to use the uh crowd of uh mystics either as cover or a distraction on the opposite side okay not sure um, which maybe a map of algal is pulled up so you can see so um just for all of your knowledge uh if you zoom in kind of close there is a field just here on the back side of little algal um with like trees and stuff that lead back into Ara Ara and then the covenant city um that would be your fastest trajectory you have a few options you could try to get a boat and take the river all the way up into Ara Ara, where it ends here. Um, you can uh, tra traverse this kind of wilderness swampy area in between. It's not like a dense swamp. It's like low-lying Everglades um, and try to come in the backside of Ara Ara. Or you can just simply take the streets uh, and walk the streets all the way through. Um, it will be a very long journey on foot. It will probably take you seven or eight hours give or take okay knowing that probably gonna actually take the crawler then uh you could always take it the, and drop it you know yeah well we'll start with the crawler through the wilderness until uh try to see if we can cut through until Great. we get close enough that we can uh hide it somewhere and hit the streets the we probably see a little bit of a montage of everybody suit up, uh, pop into the crawler, taking your climbing gear and uh, weapons with you. Um, the back hatch of the Defiant opens up and the crawler exits, hitting kind of soft dirt. Uh, Malik, you know if you're going to want to get a broadcast out, out here is not going to reach the Covenant City. You're going to want to get a little closer if you're, that's really where you're trying to hit and where the people are. Um, 
but you would be able to broadcast from the crawler itself, I imagine, with your uh, ability. And at, we see, as tonight comes to a close, the crawler kind of trail off into this swampy, uh, wooded area as it cuts across, uh, headed straight for Ara Ara. Um, you're going to knock off about three or four hours uh, of travel on foot down to about an hour's worth of travel through the wilderness. But we will have to pick up next week there as the crawler heads towards the Covenant City and the crew has a hopeful plan of, um, of maybe actually turning the monolith on, not off. I think you mean the crew hopefully has a plan. Um, <laughs> uh, all right, friends, this was episode 50 uh, overall of, uh, of Void. We are coming to our series finale uh, this is a fucking month of finales, man. I'm having a rough time. Um, <laughs> uh, so you remember uh, you were planning on, and you even asked and hoped that I did. both your finales happen oh. in the same week. I I tried to have back to back finales. I'm so glad the schedule got You're fucked up. I would have I would have been destroyed. <laughs> I would have been riggedy wrecked. Um, yeah, <laughs> I couldn't even handle that pain. Uh, so we're coming to an end with this series, but don't worry, we have more. Uh, stuff coming down the pipeline. Uh, for now, let's go around, do our introductions. We can get the hell out of here, do our after show that you guys can get over on our Patreon. Link for that down below. Join us at the $5 tier if you like what we do here and you want to support the channel. And while you're down there, click on that Discord link. Join us in the Discord. Be a part of the community. Be a part of the conversation. But for now, uh, we'll start with... Uh, usually I reserve this title for Dot, but the arbiter of our demise, KP. Uh, <laughs> who are you? Where can we find you? And how do you plan on ruining our lives? <laughs> uh, well... Uh, my name is KP. I go by KP Living Studios and all your social medias, and I do many things, especially ruin these folks' lives, apparently. And how I plan to do that is just keep on playing with them on all their games and keep keep uh, just being their friend. So there you go. That's how I can, I hope to continue to be on that mission. Uh, as far as what I do, I do many things. You can catch me mostly on Twitter. Uh, come follow me if you haven't already there. Uh, as of right now, Oh boy, uh, the only thing really that's in my purview is uh, is is my uh, Friday game with Dot. We have our Cola City of Light and Shadow. There you go, I got it on the first try. Look at me. Uh, which is a Fate Light campaign where we go and punch Nazis. And if that doesn't entice you, I, I don't know what will. That's pretty much what we do. It's a big game about a lot of shenanigans and, and, and reconnaissance and spy stuff. So go check it out. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and uh, yeah, outside of that. Oh yeah, outside of that, uh, next Wednesday. So every alternate Wednesday from now on, for we have our uh, 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 our uh, brain farts, brain farts, uh, running Faye Wild campaign. I'm sorry, it's been a day. Uh, running Faye Wild campaign, where if you like the concept of isekais, where our protagonists get sucked into a brand new world and have to deal with the brand new fantasy setting. This is what it is. We are a bunch of players playing players who get sucked into their game of D&D &D and now are their own characters. And I get to play a sapphire gem dragon whose original person is a stoner. So that's a lot of fun. Hey, you know, stone dragon, stoned dragon. <laughs> uh, get, out. Cool. I'm sorry. get out, get out, get <laughs> out. Get out. Uh, you can't come back I for the finale. You're done. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Aris, who are you? Where can we find you? And what are you up to? Hello, I'm Aris Avad. I make things. Uh, you can find the things that I make at arisavad.com. Uh, I have exactly five things in my ready to ship store. And it would be really cool if I could sell out tonight. Just oh. saying. Uh, I have... A, I, I've I have a shop update coming tomorrow at uh, noon Mountain Standard Time or Daylight Time or whatever Mountain Time, uh, whatever time it is here in the mountains. Um, yeah, so you can check that out at erisavad.com. If you use the code Hot Dice Daddies, you get a nice discount. And yes, I fixed it because nice. apparently there was a, something wrong with the code can't have everything but now we All can right. you can and you can get 10 percent off nice nice 
Uh, speaking of nice hot daddies, uh, Gnome, who are you? Where can we find you on the internet? And what are you up to? I play this game on Thursdays. It's called Void Coriolis. Wow. I also do a podcast with Mike. With Mike. It's called Hot Days Daddies. And we talk like this. Deep into the mic. I am so uncomfortable right now. <laughs> Good. You can become a patron. On the Unmade Gaming Podcast Network. That used to be... The Hot Dice Daddies. Patreon. We've got some hot content for you. No, no. No. Please, Mike, pass, pass it. <laughs> See, it's like when you hear inverse ASMR, you think shouting. But no, it's really ASMR that makes you uncomfortable as opposed to like, oh, my brain tingles. It's like, oh, my skin crawls. And that's what we want. That's what we want from you. Uh, Mission accomplished. Uh, God damn. Go check out that podcast. Hot Dice Daddy's podcast. Um, <laughs> <laughs> last but not least, Dot, who are you? Where can we find you? Uh, and what are you up to? I am Little Red Dot. You can find me where Little Red Dots are found online, mostly at Cobalt Press and my podcast where we do not do ASMR, uh, mm -hmm. called Stitch of Fate. Uh, we actually are expanding into a podcast network called Pod by Night. You can check out KP Guested with us. It's edited by our delightful gnome, uh, who puts real sound effects in. Uh, not his voice. Not like his, yeah. Did. Well, maybe he does, and I don't even know it. But <laughs> the fact of the matter is, uh, we're out there doing the thing, so more content coming your way uh, since we just wrapped up or we're getting very close to wrapping up this season. So um, lots of cool stuff there. And uh, I think, have we told everybody what's next, Mike? We haven't, but speaking of, thanks for that fucking amazing lineup. Uh, uh, the, the perfect segue is if you guys want to know what's up, because we haven't officially mentioned it, uh, Gnome and I let it slip in the latest episode of Hot Dice Daddies. Go check out that podcast, Hot Dice Daddies <laughs> podcast. And you can hear it's us real breathily. Ooh, hey now. You can hear us get real breathy and slip in uh, what our next campaign's gonna be with all the faces you see here before you. But that's it for us. We're gonna get the hell out of here. We're gonna do our after show. We're gonna put that up on Patreon. You guys can get that. Click on that link down below. Some of you just did it. Great. Thank you so much. You're the best. Uh, and uh, we'll see you guys next week for more yeah. of these shenanigans and the possible finale. I have a feeling we're gonna end next week, everybody. <laughs> next week. That's dot, it. Dot spending those darkness points with that. I mean, we. I have a wish. So. I have a wish. So the wish, <laughs> the wish is coming. I have to simmer on it, but I, I, I think I have a Come plan, and it's all gonna happen next week. Next Come join week. the after show where they are gonna just yell at me today. So, lightning says great. we have to end the stream, Mike. <laughs> it's gonna be great. That's it from us, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye bye. Bye G. And only G. <laughs> <laughs>